Hey everyone, Mike at the library again, and I've got a little secret for you. Did you know that Superman was born right here in Cleveland? It's true, and it's not really that big of a secret, but a lot of people don't know that Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were born and raised in Cleveland and created Superman while finishing as students at Glenville High School. It was 80 some odd years ago, so easy to forget. Today, young adult associate Ray Ford and I are taking you on a tour of Superman's Cleveland, a few sites commemorating Superman and his creators. We'll start at Siegel's childhood home on Kimberly Avenue, visit the spot where Schuster grew up, and finish at an Ohio historical marker at East 105th in St. Clair, all while telling you about a few Superman books and graphic novels you can grab at the library. All these sites are about a 15 minute drive from the library, so as soon as you check out the books we're gonna talk about, head to the Glenville area to check out those sites. Here we go. first stop of our journey to explore Superman in the Glenville neighborhood. We're on Kimberly Avenue at the house at the home where Superman was born. And as we stand here, me and Mike Stein, we're going to talk about a few books. Um, I'm going to cover the nonfiction area and Mike is going to dig into uh, some of the stories. So the book that I'm going to talk about is uh, the unauthorized biography of Superman and is written by Glenn Weldon. And what he does is he traces in this book like the evolution of Superman on down to like his hairstyle, uh, the differences in his costume, um, how he's evolved with the times and how um, he's sort of this symbol of, you know, truth and justice and the American way. And he paints a picture of how he actually evolved and how he's turned into this, this, this symbol, almost like the American flag. Um, and I really, really, it's pretty long. It's about 300 pages. Um, so if you have time, please, and you're really interested in Superman, please check it out. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Probably no bigger comic book and graphic novel fan than Mr. Ray at the library, other oh, no. than me, right? right equal <laughs> at least, right? I try to be. So we're here, as uh, Ray said, in front of the house where Jerry Siegel was born in uh, 1914. It's still a house. People live here. It's all decorated up with Superman uh, logos and things like that, but people live here. Uh, so Jerry Siegel was born here, created Superman in 1932 when he's 18 years old, along with Joe Schuster. This book that I think is a great read is by Brian Michael Bendis. It's the Man of Steel. Brian Michael Bendis is also a Cleveland son. He was born in uh, University Heights, Cleveland Heights area, grew up there, uh, went to Cleveland Institute of Art, moved to Lakewood, and then eventually he hooked on with Image Comics and eventually Marvel Comics, where he created the ultimate Spider-Man, who is Miles Morales and has become a big sensation in the Marvel Universe over the last few years. Um, now he's at DC and he's writing Superman, so perfect combination of uh, character born here and the author born here. So uh, this was his first series for DC. He's still writing action comics. He's still writing the Superman ongoing series. So, uh, and this one introduced a new villain called Rogel Czar, who claims to have destroyed Krypton. We all know that Superman came from Krypton when it blew up. His parents sent him up in a rocket ship. And you know, when they originally created him and over the years, that was just something that happened. The planet blew up. But now they're saying somebody went and destroyed Krypton. So Brian Michael Bennis has done a lot of those things uh, in his couple years with Superman, some of them controversial, uh, just changing some of the backstory. So this is uh, the start to that. So come out of the library, grab this and some other Superman graphic novels. And we even have some of the regular monthly comic books. And you can see, if you look on the porch here, I mean, look at all of the, you can all see the, the, the evolution of Superman just on the porch with all of the action figures. Uh, I think I see, Mike, you see the, the new 52 version yep. of Superman. I see the, uh, what is that, the original depiction of him with the S curl at the front. Um, wow, it's like almost like paying homage to him at this house. Somewhere. I like the little uh, bowling ball Superman. Oh yeah. Number four on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And even the, you see the, the, the backpacks in the, uh, in the windows and what is, it's a thermos. When was the last time you saw a thermos for, <laughs> up at the top there? So, um, and in the attic, the lore is we don't know exactly where in the house he was created, but the, they say that he was actually created there in the attic, but we don't know that for sure. 
but that's the that's the rumor that, that it was actually re written and created up there in that attic right there well that's awesome it's really well kept here and like we said people live here so if you come by just take a look take a couple pictures and don't ex away. don't expect to be let in but they'll let you look around <laughs> hello again now we are at the site of the home of joe schuster artist of Superman and Action Comics. When it was created in 1938, he and his family lived on this site. The house is new now. It's on the corner of Amor and Parkwood in the Glenville District. Um, Action Comics number one came out June 1938. was the first time anybody had ever seen Superman. And at the time, Superman, they pretty much glossed over him as a young kid. There was no Kents that adopted him. There was no Superboy. He was a baby turned into an orphanage, and by halfway through the first page, he was a grown man. He could leap an eighth of a mile. He could hurdle a 20-story building. At the time, he couldn't fly. Uh, there was, as I said, there was no tents. There were no supervillains. He fought corruption and murderers. His very first adventure here, he goes to the governor's mansion, busts down the steel door that the governor sleeps by. All governors, all politicians had to protect themselves like that. He busts down and t tells the governor he has to call the jail and stop an execution that's gonna happen in 15 minutes at midnight because the real murderer, Superman, is captured and left outside. So that's the types of things that he did in the very beginning. Uh, then he goes on to take on a wife beater, beats him up. Then he goes on a date with Lois Lane. This is the first time we see Lois Lane, so she was pretty much there from the beginning with Superman. Uh, he goes on a date with Lois Lane, some mafioso type guy cuts in, Superman, as, as Clark Kent, has to be meek. He goes off sulking. Lois Lane smacks the guy. She doesn't like him, but the guy decides to kidnap Lois Lane on the way home because he likes her so much. And here's what you see as the cover page of the very first Action Comics. Superman goes and stops the car, tips it over. Looks pretty dangerous tipping Lois Lane out that way, but that's what Superman did back then. And then finally, he takes on some corrupt politicians. I'm not sure what they did, but Superman stopped them. That's the types of things that he did back then for the first year or so of Superman comics. And then he took on the supervillains. And Mr. Ray, I got a question for you. Yes. So you can read some of these action comics over the years, adventures, and this graphic novel we have. Who was the first supervillain that Superman took on? The first supervillain? Very oh. first supervillain for Superman. How much time do I have? I don't know how long <laughs> they're going to want to watch. Um... I'm going to say Lex Luthor. Close. Not Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor came about a couple years after Superman or Action Comics debuted. The mm -hmm. very first supervillain was Ultra Humanite. Ultra Humanite. Ultra Humanite came about a year later after the first Action Comics. Action Comics number 13, Superman fought Ultra Humanite. So I'm looking forward, maybe in the next Justice League movie, uh, Superman will fight reborn ultra humanite something that we'll see what he looks like sounds like he could be a pretty formidable bad guy mm -hmm. so wow action comics this is a collection of the uh, 80 years at the time that it came out this was obviously put out about 10 years ago because superman was uh, made in 1938 so maybe not quite 10 but a couple years ago collects 80 years worth uh some of the highlights of action comics and the first one you see on this uh fence along the house on amor and Parker. And Mr. Ray, what uh, are you promoting? Uh, I, this time I'm promoting the autobot, well, the biography. It's almost like the Bible of uh, the guys who created Superman, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster. Um, it's called Superboys, and it's written by Brad Rica. And what he did is he took 10 years and he just researched these two men. Uh, he, they, the, the, way they, the way he describes it, he went into boarded up schools to find documents. He did all types of research at libraries. He did um, research, he, uh, just asking around about people that were alive and may have known the family. And all of the houses, all the places that we've been, he actually visited. And he just did a bunch of research. And what he did was he came up and he mapped out everything up to this point, almost, to this uh, first uh, action comics in 1930. He deep dives and it's I consider it the Bible I don't know if, if you all haven't read it you pretty you really should if you're into Superman if you're into superheroes you get to see how the creative process works you get to see the the, the business side of how to get a superhero published and all of the trials and tribulations that go along with it um, so if you're interested in Superman 
after seeing what Mike just told us about this first one, walking us through it, how can you not be? Um, he's a Clevelander. What are you going to do? Yeah, I believe he teaches that case lesson reserve. Yes, he does. And so, Mike, he asked me a question. Mike, now I'm going to ask you uh -oh. a question. Okay, so name what are three ways that you can beat Superman? Or can you? Can you beat uh, Superman? No, it's been very hard over the years. I know Doomsday killed him at one time mm -hmm. by just beating him to a pulp, him but to a pulp. Uh, he wasn't really dead. He came back until he was uh, put in a coma or something and they couldn't figure out how he died. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't really dead through his Kryptonian you know, anatomy. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what am I thinking? Everybody knows Kryptonite. Of course, kryptonite. you can defeat Superman with Kryptonite. That's number one. He derives his power from the sun, so if you eliminate the uh, sun from yep. the equation, take him off planet, he becomes more of a normal yep. uh, superhero. Okay. Or put him in a big deep cave. Deep cave, okay, that yeah. would be Although he kind of stores <laughs> uh, that yellow sun power for I don't know how long, it's, it's varied over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess the third way would be uh, kill Lois Lane. Yes. <laughs> or do something or to threaten. her. I mean, uh, look, the very first Action Comics, he's Going yep. after some guy that mm -hmm. tried to cut in on a dance. That's yep. how much he likes Lois Lane. Yep. That, and that's it. No, very few people get that. Uh, the Joker, from what I understand, in Hush, and Batman's Hush, he actually used Lois Lane as a pawn that's to what, pull to, to pull Superman out. And that was one of the ways that he got him. He could actually play him like a puppet. That's why they always try to keep their identity secret. You know, hey, look, I'm Superman. Oh, I didn't know. How could you tell? <laughs> well, we're a mask now. Everybody knows who everybody is mm -hmm. with the mask on. So yeah, that's the new going uh, thing. But, uh, you know, in the comics, they wear masks and you don't know who they are at all. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, Action Comics. Come in the library, call us, grab this one, and we're off to see the final stop, the Superman Historical Marker. All right, Mr. Ray, we're here at our final stop on the Superman tour. We're at the Ohio Historical Marker for the home of Superman. This commemorates Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, who grew up in the neighborhood, went to Glenville High School, and of course, created Superman. So it's been here since 2003. And the book that I have here for this marker is a Lois Lane graphic novel, also based on a person who grew up in the neighborhood. Her name was Joanne Carter. The physical appearance of Lois Lane was based on Joanne Carter, who had placed an ad in the Cleveland Plain Dealer, which was answered by Joe Schuster, and then he started making drawings of her, and they based Lois Lane on Joanne Carter. Uh, Jerry Siegel based her character on Glenda Farrell's portrayal of fictional reporter Torchic Lane in movies at the time. I'm sure you've uh, seen many of those, right? And then in 1948, uh, Siegel and jo Joanne Carter married. So, Lois Lane is probably the most prominent supporting member of the Superman cast. Can you name any of the other members? Or any any supporting characters? Oh wow! Two prominent ones. Uh, Lex Luthor. Well, I guess he would be on the other. He would be on the other side. But he's been with Superman pretty much since the beginning. Oh uh, man, I cannot. I can put you on the spot. I can't think of him. Well, who the photographer? His best friend. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen. He first. He was first named on the Superman Adventures of Superman radio show in April of 1940. Although they claim this is probably red conning. They claim that someone with a bow tie appeared in Action Comics number six, and that was Jimmy Olsen. They probably just made that up earlier. Did he look like it? Well, he had a bow tie, so that's what Jimmy Olsen is known as, having a bow tie. Of course, I'll take it. you got Perry White, you know, the editor of The Daily Planet, who also debuted on a radio show in February of 1940, and in the comics in Superman number 70 in 1940. And then Lana Lamb, who was uh, Clark Kent's former friend, childhood girlfriend, perhaps. Uh, and she debuted in 1950. So the Lois Lane, the most prominent member, and has married Superman. I think she learned who he was, forgot who he was, yeah. as a kid with him, all kinds of things. So, so, so this is one to come in and check out. And Mr. Ray has. This one, I, again, I'm going to take the nonfiction route because with Mike giving you the stories, the, the graphic novels uh, that they wrote, there's actually a story behind those stories, like how those stories came to be. And given that we're in their neighborhood, this graphic novel is actually a biography of uh, Joe and Jerry. And inside, you know, it actually shows you how they end up creating these characters. If you can see, I don't know if you can see. 
it tells you the story of how they came to create these characters. It talks about how, um, I forget who was one, was Joe's dad, I think he was robbed and he was, he was killed. And so that made him want to create this Superman. conversation I'm gonna open this again now, the panels are always very small when you read it because there's a lot of action a lot of conversation that goes on to explain how these things um, happen with uh, the creation of Lois Lane we get to meet the actual Lois Lane uh, we get to meet um, Jerry and we actually get to meet a lot of the disagreements that they had about how to like push the character forward and how to get it published and actually the trouble that they had actually getting it this is kind of a behind the scenes to the stories that might be just be telling you about in graphic novel form. So this is on our shelf. Please check this out too. And as you mentioned, uh, his dad died of a heart attack, right? And that uh, inspired Superman to be created. And Superman at the time was kind of more of a common man. Uh, you know, he, he, he defeated the common criminal. So it wasn't the super villains all the time. He was up against corrupt politicians and murderers and things like that. And I think that was based on his dad. All right, well, thanks for watching our video, and we've got these books available and plenty more for you, so give us a call or come on in the library.